Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the 26th lecture of uh, surface engineering. Um, in the last uh, lecture, we discussed uh, carburizing uh, as a strategy for improving wear resistance or surface dependent mechanical properties. And compared to uh, the mechanically driven processes like uh, shock pinning or shot pinning and so on, uh, here the process was based on a thermochemical approach whereby we changed the composition of the near surface region and then also carried out a thermal treatment so that carbon could diffuse. The whole uh, uh, objective was to enrich the surface with carbon. Uh, the beginning material uh, usually is a mild steel less than 0.2.3 percent weight percent carbon. So, we enrich the surface with carbon to take it to close to eutectoid temperature, a uh, eutectoid composition. So, somewhere around point certainly more than 0.4. So, typically I would say 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 percent carbon sometimes even higher. And then uh, uh, we carry out certain heat treatment processes, but that uh, we have not discussed so far. Uh, in uh, pack carburizing or solid state carburizing as the name suggests, the, everything is done in the solid state and only due to the chemical reaction within the furnace or the atmosphere uh, gaseous precursors form. And uh, these are essentially uh, through dissociation of sodium carbonate leading to formation of carbon dioxide reacting with carbon or graphite uh, the available charcoal activated charcoal and uh, forms carbon monoxide which in contact with the hot iron piece or uh, solid steel surface deposits carbon and this carbon in the form of activated or nascent form. Uh, gets adsorbed and then subsequently absorbed or diffused into the material. So, that is the overall process in the solid state. Now, we are going to discuss liquid uh, uh, carburizing uh, sometimes which is also called cyaniding and uh, uh, subsequently we will also uh, discuss uh, a similar process of carburizing in the gaseous state. So, the basic difference uh, uh, bit, uh, from what we discussed earlier is the fact that we are talking about a process which is uh, a liquid state processing, not the solid sample, but the uh, medium. So, uh, we uh, have a liquefied carbon rich environment and uh, that is typically uh, uh, sodium cyanide and the sodium cyanide actually. So, uh, the configuration would be somewhat like this that uh, this is the chamber which is to be sealed and uh, this portion needs to be very properly sealed. In fact, uh, sometimes as a preca precautionary measure, the top layer also is covered with, uh, uh, with the ch charcoal. So, that uh, uh, whatever dissociates from sodium cyanide does not go into the atmosphere. It is a highly toxic gas. So, um, so, this is basically a salt bath in which the sample is uh, immersed or dipped inside and obviously, the liquid covers the surface of the solid or the sample object uh, from all sides and uh, this is usually suspended from the top or there could be also a provision of rotating this uh, so that there is some amount of uh, percolation or agitation within the bath. But normally, this is uh, good enough to just heat it uh, from the bottom so that the salt is in the molten state. So, the salt is in the molten state and in this uh, molten or liquid state, uh, the sample is dipped. Now, um, so these uh, are essentially flames uh, or burners through which we heat up. Um, the whole chamber is actually enclosed in a uh, furnace, uh, 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 furnace uh, with a certain amount of refractory lining, so that the heat is radiated back onto the uh, vessel containing the salt bath. So, the bath is actually maintained always in liquid state. Uh, usually, whenever we deal with uh, salt bath processes, uh, these kind of 
uh, activities uh, never completely ceases. In other words, uh, you really, once you have molten the salt, you generally would not like to allow it to come to room temperature because every time you do that, uh, there's a lot of dissociation that, that takes place and in the process, the composition can change uh, significantly. So, once on, uh, we always maintain in the uh, molten state, but obviously, uh, the temperature can be decreased, uh, not necessarily we always maintain this kind of an uh, reaction temperature. We reduce it to may maybe just a few hundred degrees, maybe 300, 400 degrees centigrade, where the salt will still be in a molten state. Now, usually uh, in all kinds of salt bath furnaces or salt bath, we actually use multiple salts so that they form a eutectic, but in case of um, liquid uh, carburizing, particularly the cyanide process, it is a single salt which is heated to approximately there are two versions actually like uh, one is uh, this uh, low so called the low temperature variety the other one is the high temperature variety uh, typically this low temperature variety would mean you are heating certainly less than 900 degrees centigrade typically about 800 to 850 860 degrees centigrade whereas the high temperature variety would be anywhere between 900 to about 960 degrees centigrade now um, in the low temperature variety, which actually is slightly slower process, uh, what we see in terms of chemical reaction is uh, the sodium cyanide that dissociates into um, a lower salt, which is uh, disodium cyanamide. And uh, in the process, uh, we see uh, liberation of activated or uh, nascent carbon. So, this nascent carbon, like in the previous case, if this is the, the work piece that we are talking about, then this is the work piece which actually is covered with this um, uh, nascent carbon which gets adsorbed to the surface. So, this is initially just a chemiadsorption process and then subsequently because of high temperature environment we are maintaining which is an isothermal temperature. So, uh, carbon diffuses inside the material up to a certain depth. And that we have discussed already in the previous lecture that this uh, diffusion depth, uh, the so called x uh, of the diffusion, that is a function of time, of course, at a given temperature t. So, uh, approximately we uh, use an empirical relationship wherein we know that this is the depth uh, with uh, which we expect for the uh, diffusion of carbon, and this d in turn is a temperature dependent term uh, uh, which basically is uh, derived from this kind of an Arrhenius relationship which simply says that d is proportional to temperature. So, there are certain definite advantages. The first advantage is that the uh, test piece, the work piece that is being carburized is covered by the solution from all sides. So, the entire surface, the entire surface area, the contour of the workpiece is uh, treated at the same time and hence the uh, diffusion depth of carbon is very uniform throughout, no matter what the uh, shape and uh, complexity of the geometry is. Number two is in all solid state processes, for example, pack carburizing, uh, there will always be some uh, uh, pressure of oxygen or some presence of oxygen um, uh, within the atmosphere, within the furnace atmosphere. So, even if it is present in very low partial pressure, a uh, little amount of oxygen presence at least initially can cause formation of some thin oxide layer onto the uh, surface of metal, which is uh, steel basically. Iron has very high affinity for oxygen at high temperature. So, it, it can always form a very thin layer of oxide. and. Uh, that does create problems if this oxide layer is uh, not so thin or happens to be little adherent. Um, so, it is for this reason uh, we actually pack in when we do uh, solid state carburizing, we have to pack with sufficient amount of uh, graphite or activated charcoal, which should take care of the uh, oxygen present in the atmosphere and then convert this into carbon dioxide. In case of liquid state processing, that uh, kind of a uh, uh, difficulty or um, worry does not arise because this is immersed in a 
uh, molten bath of salt uh, with very little scope of oxygen ingress from outside. First of all, this is closed, this is sealed here and moreover, there is very little solubility of oxygen in this molten bath. In order to hasten the process, accelerate the process, sometimes some amount of agitation is uh, created by way of mechanical stirrer or uh, rotating the sample and so on, but that is not always needed because uh, uh, the bath is already in a molten state and there is a natural convection uh, uh, because somewhat there will always be a temperature gradient from the surface to the, to the, to the sample. So, there will be a natural convection which will take care of a uh, good amount of circulation. Now, um, so this kind of a process uh, at low temperature essentially as I said requires or involves uh, dissociation of sodium cyanide into uh, disodium uh, um, uh, cyanide and um, this uh, kind of uh, um, dissociation also liberates this uh, nascent carbon and this uh, nascent carbon uh, will actually um, as I said will diffuse into the material. Temperature is uh, slightly lower comparatively. On the other hand, if we actually want, uh, so typical depth of penetration here would be about a millimeter or at times uh, maybe less than a millimeter, maybe 0.75 millimeter. And, but the time required for this kind of a process is very small, is less than 30 minutes. Compared, to, if you compare this with the pack carburizing process, typically the to get about 1 or 2 millimeter, you require easily something like 8 to 10 hours. Uh, compared to that, this is a very rapid process. Also, the penetration of carbon is not only quicker, but also is more uniform. Now, if you actually want to, instead of just a millimeter or 0 0.7, 0 0.8 millimeter, if you want to go somewhat like about 2 millimeter or more, you would go for slightly a higher temperature which is about 950, 960 degrees centigrade and uh, then this uh, the sodium and cyanide bath that we use is actually um, uh, mixed with barium chloride. So, in this process, uh, the barium chloride reacts and uh, creates a, a barium uh, cyanamide and also liberates the sodium chloride. In fact, some amount of sodium chloride or potassium chloride salts are always added as uh, uh, additional uh, compounds which actually prevent unnecessary um, chemical reactions from outside. So, they, they remain more or less neutral, uh, but with the addition of barium chloride, ba barium actually displaces the sodium cation and forms the uh, barium uh, cyanamide. And, uh, um, then barium cyanamide actually in turn now reacts with the, the heated steel or iron and dissociates and liberates carbon. So, this uh, uh, the dissociation of BSCN2 to BSCN2 not uh, the cyanide uh, radical dissociates into cyanamide radical and as a result it liberates carbon and this carbon is in activated state or nascent state. So, the same process happens that carbon goes to the surface, gets adsorbed and then subsequently absorbed by way of diffusion. So, in this kind of uh, salt carburizing or so called cyaniding process, uh, what we have already understood is that we have molten salt bath and the components are dipped or immersed inside and that is how we introduce carbon into the steel surface. Uh, the carbon diffuses inward and uh, enrichment of carbon produces the so called hardened case. And in fact, uh, uh, sometimes this uh, sample, this uh, uh, immersed uh, specimen uh, after uh, liquid carburizing can be directly lifted and um, uh, immersed or, or uh, quenched into a coolant and there is no separate heat treatment needed in that case. So, um, so that is how we create an hardened case and uh, whatever we produce by liquid carburizing, usually uh, the target is uh, carbon enrichment, but sometimes nitrogen also goes inside the solid sample. Now, if you actually um, happen to uh, follow a process or, or create a, a situation whereby both carbon and nitrogen goes into solution, then um, uh, 
you actually end up producing what is known as uh, carbon nitrides. And this carbon nitrides actually create a much harder case. As it is, uh, this kind of uh, a process uh, creates a slightly harder case than uh, packed carburized surfaces. But with introduction of nitrogen, the hardness on the surface is even higher. And that actually is both good and bad news. The good news is that you have higher hardness, so you can expect better wear resistance, uh, at least empirically. But on the other hand, if you make the surface too hard, then there is no chance of further machining or uh, any other shaping processes as a follow-up. So by and large, uh, liquid carburizing is an advantageous process. The biggest disadvantage is the fact that we are dealing with uh, cyanide. And we all are aware that cyanide is an extremely toxic uh, compound. Even uh, by, uh, accidentally, if the operator uh, happens to inhale uh, uh, vapor of cyanide, that certainly can cause uh, very lethal action. So we have to be extremely careful. And even disposal of these molten salt or treating or refurbishing, recharging, all these are fairly hazardous processes. So that's something uh, which is why, despite the fact that it is a very fast, uh, kinetically quick process, still uh, uh, liquid carburizing or cyaniding is not a very uh, popular uh, process adopted uh, very widely in the industry. In fact, it's usually done only for very limited components and in uh, only by uh, few companies, only a few companies. Compared to that, gas carburizing is another process where the intention is the same that we want to enrich the surface of a solid component with carbon uh, to the tune of uh, certainly more than 0.4 weight percent, uh, uh, easily uh, something like uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 weight percent carbon. The temperature of treatment is uh, 870, 950 degrees centigrade. This is somewhat similar to what we experience in case of uh, pack carburizing. Uh, pack carburizing actually uh, can be done even at a slightly higher temperature, but uh, since we are dealing with uh, fluid here, so the temperature is uh, 950 is good enough a temperature for um, uh, carrying out this kind of a treatment. The, the, the main uh, distinction, point of distinction apart from the uh, state of the medium, which is gaseous in this case, the main difference arises uh, from the fact that we are essentially dealing with a single carbon containing uh, gaseous compound, methane. So it is methane which actually in this chamber of ga gas carburizing chamber actually dissociates in contact with, uh, though it is a saturated hydrocarbon, but it actually undergoes dissociation in contact with hot metal. Hot uh, metal means uh, heated solid steel surface and uh, liberates uh, nascent carbon. And this nascent carbon actually is uh, the species which actually diffuses into the material as deep as a few millimeters. And this can be very easily controlled because everything is in gaseous state. So uh, precise control of temperature, uh, time of uh, exposure uh, and certain things can be easily controlled. Also, presence of hydrogen is helpful because it does not allow any undue oxidation to take place. So, we do get fairly high hardness, uh, RC in the Rockwell C scale uh, measuring all the way up to 63 hardness, which is uh, fairly high hardness. And that is purely because we, uh, after the follow up heat treatment, we expect the microstructure to be predominantly martensitic. So, um, Mostly it is methane based process, but you can also use higher hydrocarbons, uh, uh, maybe uh, ethane or propane and, and so on. Um, so uh, for example, uh, C3H8 can dissociate, gets dissociated at high temperature. So we get uh, again uh, uh, nascent carb liberation of nascent carbon. Otherwise, uh, this is the usual process. Uh, there is also a possibility of converting some of these uh, carbon, if there is uh, some amount of carbon dioxide present in, that in the chamber, uh, it can actually react and form carbon monoxide. And once carbon monoxide forms, again uh, in contact with the hot steel surface, it can liberate carbon. This is exactly the kind of reaction that we see in case of back carburizing. Similar thing can happen over here also, but that is not the main path through which you introduce uh, carbon. 
So, unlike the previous case where we had a liquid bath, here we have a fluid bath of course, but this is gaseous, surrounds the whole surface. We have the same advantage of carburizing from all sides and uniformly. Uh, there is no need of any um, agitation or percolation because the gaseous medium will have a natural convection. We just need to maintain uh, the isothermal temperature, desired isothermal temperature which would be somewhat like this. But the gas that we feed in actually uh, in some cases comes either as purely from the uh, gas bottles of methane bottles or we can also use hydrocarbon source for example, natural gas. So, we can actually have a mixture of air and natural gas fit into a gas chamber and uh, through certain arrangements inside which in includes a gas heater uh, because of which the gas dissociates and uh, reacts and then goes through a catalyst chamber. And then uh, once we uh, use a gas cooler uh, or a heat exchanger, then we get the right proportion of methane or maybe methane and uh, propane and so on and that is what we feed in. Uh, there is some amount of buffer uh, gas also used uh, for example, nitrogen and hydrogen which covers the surface and presence of hydrogen actually is beneficial because it helps in um, removing whatever little oxide layer that might be present onto the workpiece. So, uh, the process would uh, mean again the same thing that you if you have carbon uh, dioxide present there could be formation of carbon monoxide and uh, then carbon monoxide uh, or carbon dioxide can also lead to dissociation and uh, deposition of carbon onto the surface. So, these are uh, parallel reaction possibilities not necessarily the main course of action. The main uh, reaction is through exactly uh, this process. Um, I decided to repeat this uh, view graph so that uh, the concept uh, is uh, pretty clear. So, what we actually uh, uh, are what we expect in a carburizing process like this is the following that um, uh, so this is the, the surface area and um, so this surface area is um, uh, this is the surface through uh, which is exposed to this gaseous environment and this is the uh, core of the sample. So, if we have a sample like this, this is how we are treating. So, this is the core. So, if I take a section and just looking at half of it, then uh, this, is the, uh, this is the core and this is the surface. So, this is the maximum carbon enrichment and this area is unaffected. We just leave it uh, without any um, uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, difference at all, without any change in composition at all. Now, um, so when uh, we actually want to carry out uh, this kind of uh, carburizing treatment in gaseous environment, this is the kind of a furnace that we use, which actually uh, can allow you to evacuate and bring it to very low pressure. Uh, so, something like you can reach 10 raised to minus 5 millibar or uh, minus 6 millibar, but then uh, you have to backfill. So, you operate at maybe 10 raised to minus 2 or minus 3 millibar uh, when you backfill with uh, methane or other kind of desired gases. And uh, we already have discussed. So, these are standard, these are very uh, ideal specimens for. Uh, uh, gas carburizing or vacuum carburizing and so on. Another version of gas carburizing is uh, when we actually um, do the operation under vacuum. Actually, as I was just uh, referring a few minutes back, uh, by vacuum what we mean is very low pressure environment. And the main advantage is the fact that there is practically uh, no presence of oxygen. Now, oxygen actually is very detrimental because it always has a tendency of reacting with the steel surface, hot steel surface and creation creating a thin oxide layer. And this oxide layer actually uh, forms uh, at high temperature very easily. Once it forms, it actually uh, uh, behaves as if it is kind of a barrier uh, for uh, other uh, gaseous molecules or atoms or nascent carbon to diffuse further in. So, we would like to avoid that by all means. So, just like uh, gas carburizing here also the uh, source of carbon will be a hydrocarbon typically methane as we did earlier. 
the temperature is usually high and uh, uh, the scope of surface oxidation is low as I just now said and uh, mm, uh, we also change the gas pressure periodically and uh, the, the temperature and pressure combination uh, should be such that we are able to maintain very uniform and uh, fairly high case depth. So, this is the chamber. Uh, this is where we feed in the carbonaceous gas which could be methane and uh, so these are the heating coils. This is the work piece, these are the work piece and so these are the let us say tiny little work piece here and this whole chamber is evacuated. So, these doors are sealed here and this is how you evacuate. Whatever components you keep in, you expose them to methane and uh, the reacted gas uh, actually comes out through this uh, opening. So, by and large whether it is uh, pack carburizing or gas carburizing or uh, liquid carburizing, even vacuum carburizing, the strategy is the same that we introduce nascent carbon onto the surface which can diffuse in and create a carbon rich layer. And enrichment of carbon is required because of the reason that we discussed in one of the lectures on fundamentals that we martensite is the hardest solid solution provided we have sufficient amount of carbon. So, unless we have anything like uh, 0.4 weight percent or more, we do not necessarily exp can expect that uh, martensite would give the, uh, the very high hardness that it is known to provide, something like RC 63, 64, 65 or that range. So, we deal, we begin with low carbon uh, stock, 0.2 percent carbon, so that the core will maintain a ferrite, perlite or simply ferritic microstructure, uh, so that it can absorb uh, load, it can uh, provide high toughness and the surface actually will develop very high hardness. So, from uh, the surface to the core, we see a gradation of microstructure and hence gradation of hardness and other relevant mechanical properties. And this is done by a so called thermochemical process by way of introducing carbon onto the surface. And very soon we will discuss the subsequent heat treatment that is given and that would amply explain as to the creation of this graded microstructure also creates a challenge in terms of heat treatment of the stock after carburizing. So, that we develop very high hardness and wear resistance on the surface, but maintain high toughness at the core. So, it is time to um, uh, summarize. Uh, so, what we have generally discussed here is the relative advantages of the uh, aqueous bath or liquid bath uh, carburizing. Um, many advantages, uh, I mean including uh, small time required, very uniformity of the microstructure and diffusion depth developed and ease of operation and so on. But the biggest disadvantage is that uh, or the biggest hazard that we have to worry about is the uh, uh, adequate measures to be undertaken so that the cyanide gas or fume does not reach uh, uh, the atmosphere and is properly treated and uh, um, uh, taken care. So, um, the human, the operators working in the plant have to be properly protected and also adequate uh, preventive measures are to be undertaken. Um, then, uh, the process parameter wise since this is a diffusion control process, all the processes except the initial short pinning kind of processes, all the thermally activated processes are dependent on the diffusion coefficient, the temperature uh, which in turn actually uh, uh, governs the level of diffusion coefficient and then um, uh, at the isothermal condition what amount of time we give. So, the combination of time and temperature is very crucial. Uh, of course, uh, the activity of carbon either in the uh, solid pack or in liquid uh, bath, salt bath or in the gaseous state that is equally that is also very, very important independently should be controlled. Um, the vacuum carburizing has the biggest advantage that you actually have the least scope of oxidation and uh, the process actually can give you um, slightly uh, uh, thicker uh, carburized layer. Uh, and, uh, but uh, one thing I should have mentioned that in terms of the time for operation, uh, liquid carburizing takes the least time, um, certainly less than an hour to create something like a millimeter. 
and uh, to create a similar millimeter case depth in case of uh, back carburizing you easily require 6 to 8 or 9 hours and the same in case of gas, gas carburizing could be even more 10 to 12 hours. So, um, time of processing is larger in case of gas carburizing uh, because uh, uh, the, the potential that you actually uh, have carbon potential that you have in the atmosphere is not adequate in case of gas. In fact, gas carburizing needs uh, periodic recharging of the reactant gases. Um, uh, these uh, treatments, all the treatments that we have discussed so far are all meant only for steel. So, essentially whether it is uh, gas carburizing or liquid carburizing or pack carburizing, everywhere we are dealing with steel. Now, still I mean though it is meant for only one variety of metallic alloy, still we uh, do discuss at length uh, these treatments because of very widespread uh, applicability or, or need for application of these treatments for various components based on steel. And in manufacturing processes, uh, particularly wherever we deal with uh, um, mechanical forces, uh, steel is uh, usually a very popular uh, substrate for creating various kinds of engineering implements. So, uh, so with this we uh, end the discussion on carburizing related uh, uh, techniques, which is essentially to enrich the surface with carbon and then subsequently uh, carry out some heat treatments to develop a wear resistant surface maintaining a tough core. Thank you very much.